All right, guys. So this is the um, type of thing that I'm doing, right? All these crazy bullshit uh, stories that have been floating around that you've been hearing about me, you know, probably not true. I'm going to say probably because I, I don't know what's going on, okay? I don't know all the, the different rumors that are going around. But they're getting worse and worse, so you're probably hearing some that are pretty, pretty out there, right? So whatever. It is what it is. If you're not sure, ask me. I'll tell you, I'll not tell you, but what I'll say is yes or no, or none of your business, but I won't say it that way. I'll just say, uh, I don't know nothing about nothing, or I'll say I take the fifth, or whatever, right? So, anyway, so this is one of the things I'm doing with my time, right? So I'm working on my business, right? I'm doing, you know, inspiration videos and things like that. I'm doing uh, documentation of things, catch up my paperwork, right? Training clients and, and working at the casino. So that's a part-time business going on full-time and a full-time and a part-time job, okay? Um, so when you're hearing these things that I don't work anymore, right? Um, that right there is not 100% true, right? Because I have two jobs, but they're both part-time. So in some people's eyes, I don't work no more, okay? So that squashes that one. So here's, here's the other thing. So here's a list of things here I'm doing. So top 10 mastermind ideas, inventions, courses, strategies, etc., that either add value, make money, make the world a better place, is part of something bigger than ourselves, or possibly a combo of more than one of these things, or even more incredibly than that, it can maybe possibly be all the above, okay? So this is a brainstorm thing. I just started this, right? So I'm working on an invention. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you guys what it is, right? Because somebody's going to steal my idea and then they're going to go off and make a bunch of money, right? And I'm going to be stuck here holding my dick, right? And having to do another invention, which probably isn't going to happen because it's, if you look at me, right? And not the inventive fucking scientist type guy. Am I a nerd? Yes, but I'm not fucking like, you know, the one around the, the, uh, the Big Bang Theory, those kind of guys, right? It's kind of like, my son was telling me one time, yeah, dad, you can't qualify as a nerd because you're not smart like those guys, right? Nerds are smart. So, so that puts that to, uh, to a rest. I mean, I'm not a smart uh, a nerd, but I'm, I'm, I am a, I'm in, I am a nerd, right? But I'm not a smart nerd. So let's go with, uh, number one, that I just told you about, I'm making an invention that's not telling you what the invention is, right? Whether it fails, whether it succeeds, whatever, maybe at a certain point, if, I'm not able to, to perfect it and conquer it and and utilize it and, and patent it and make money on it, then maybe I will expose it to worlds and let them try to, you know, do what I did. Or maybe I will just pass it on to somebody who can take the reins and finish it, right? And maybe I can get like a anywhere from five to fifty percent commission, depending on how close I was to succeeding, or if I was way out in the field and maybe I only get five or ten percent of the invention patent and, and uh, business that comes off of the invention because it was just my idea, but it wasn't my fucking work, right? Or very little of my work. So, and if it's not, even to that point, I might not even be able to credit the idea, but might, so we'll get it out there to the right person. We'll see what happens. But number three, no, number two is uh, Anthony Robbins' Mastermind Business Course, right? I've been doing that. Uh, I've been trying to put those uh, get those courses done and implemented and going. Uh, Jordan Belfort's straight line system. I probably won't start that until after I do number two. And as I continue to go down the list, right, I will continue to work on things as they come along. And maybe I work on more than one thing at a time. You know, maybe I do like multiple things. Maybe I just do one at a time. You know, which is most likely how I'm going to do it. You know, I'm probably going to do like one or two at a time. Because obviously, you get ten things on a list and try to do it all ten. You know, you try to do that, but you get overwhelmed. And a lot of times, you get nothing done, right? And then you get accused of not doing nothing, right? You go, oh, he ain't done nothing but freaking locked himself in the room for freaking 30 days, 90 days, whatever, right? And he hasn't done nothing yet, right? And they don't see the behind-the-scenes work that goes on, but maybe, yeah, yeah video that gets thrown out here and there, right, and so everybody gets concerned, right, you don't want to work no more, you don't want to do a nine-to-five job, 
Yeah, he's an alcoholic. He's folded into the drugs. He, he doesn't leave his house. You know, you get all these different kinds of rumors that come out because you're different. You're doing different things and things get exploded. You have one drink, you're an alcoholic. You take marijuana one time to sleep, you're a drug addict. You, you take something to wake up or kick yourself out of a depression, you're a drug addict. So these types of rumors and things are going to fly around like like no, no, like nobody's business, right? Okay, and number four, uh, ask for referrals, right? Um, that's one thing I'm horrible at, right? So I train clients to get these results and all this other stuff. And I never ask for referrals. That's stupid, right? Because freaking almost right away, people are going to know some people. They're going to tell the people, people have been trained with people and this, that, the other thing. And a lot of times they say, yeah, I got a trainer. And then they don't say what the trainer is or they don't give out the information or nothing like that. When Or they're all fired up and tell the person the name of the tra the trainer and everything else. And, you know, yeah, get a hold of me for this and that and the other thing. And I'm going to get a hold of them and, and it never gets done, right? The information is never shared, compared, you know, compared with this and the thing. And so... That person forgets to call the trainer, right? And the trainer doesn't know nothing about nothing, so he doesn't get a hold of the person who wants the trainer, right? So I hire another trainer usually. So that's what it'll usually happen. So because they're excited about those results, and they go hire another trainer, right? Whereas I'll get, a lot of times, I'll find out, you know, when I get to a client sometimes that I'm like the third or fourth, you know, trainer they've talked to, right? And then sometimes they'll, you know, sign me up around the sport, and then sometimes they'll still go and go home and, Think about it, talk about it, whatever else, and then all of a sudden I get a call, you know, later that night, the next day, the next week, the next month, whatever. All right, let's do this. So, you know, it's not about not being able to get clients. It's about being too fucking lazy, right, to do anything about asking something as simple as a referral, you know. You get one referral, you know, you, you've you doubled your business, right, and then you get, you get two referrals, you've tripled, you get... Right? This is the way it works. You get four, you've quadrupled it. Yeah, this is what you start with just one or two clients, right? I went from two clients to 20, and that was even based on referrals, and I did it really a really short amount of time. Then we hit COVID, and then coming out of COVID, we only had like four, and then I had one move, client moved to Seattle, and another client that finished their sessions, uh, and another client that, uh, that uh, kind of quit. And so I went from 20 clients to two, back up to three or four, and then back down to one or two, right? And so... It just, uh, but I haven't done nothing to try to improve it. So that's another thing. And then number four, find more clients. So that's four and five kind of go hand in hand like the love. One of them just a specific way of finding clients. And number four was just a, a, in general, right? Because there's various ways to pursue the clients. You can go and advertise. You can, you can go on social media. You can do radio, which is a form of advertisement, right? Um, there's the various ways of doing things and is you know, used to be the phone book and obviously nobody uses the phone books no more. So that's, that's out. And then, you know, posters and billboards and this and that, I've never gone that route, right? That's pretty damn spendy. So I haven't looked into those types of things, commercials on the television, right? You don't even see that very often for, for trainers. So that would be kind of a way to, to get your business out there too. And you ain't even hardly on the television and, and stuff no more, right? So, very few trainers have ever done that, right? So, you already if you're a, if you're a personal trainer, so this is kind of a this kind of a video for other trainers. You know, it's a good way to get out there is to freaking there are people that watch Univision, so you can do it in fucking in Spanish, right? But you probably better either speak Spanish yourself or um, or uh, have somebody that works for you that does, because it might be kind of hard to train a Spanish speaking client if they don't speak English. So that's the only problem with putting on Univision and stuff like that. You don't speak Spanish, and don't know if you should go that route, but you can go, you know, the English-speaking ones, right? Regardless, whether you do the Univision or not, you can go fucking bang. You know, you can go fucking, and there's a lot of people that are bilingual, obviously, so you still get those Spanish-speaking clients as long as you can speak English. But if you don't, you kind of fucked. You got to kind of just kind of go by, like, motions, and you, you still get it done, right? But it's going to be a lot of innovation. You got to do a lot of... A lot of improv and shit like that. So, you know, good luck with that. So you're better off, like I said, you learn the language or hiring somebody and taking a percentage of that trainer, you know, or hire an interpreter that's going to charge you less than you're charging, right? Because you can't pay out of pocket or, or break even just to communicate with the client, right? So you have to work that out.
That's it. So you got that. Actually, the one thing you could do is be like, well, that'd be too much, too much time though for interpreters. Have the interpreter freaking give them free personal training, but then how many fucking? Then you only can do that for like, you can only help you with like one or two clients for that, right? So that won't work. But uh, you got that option, and you got advertising for the the uh, the English speaking channels, and you can do that. As a personal trainer, if you know Spanish or not, you can go English, English, English speaking commercials. And uh, so that's why I'm, I'm at number five. And then as I get more ideas and inventions and courses and strategies and blah, 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 as those come to me, and I'll write them down because a lot of times the problem is they come up with good ideas and then they won't, uh, they won't write them down. And those ideas and stuff, they go in the graveyard with them when they die. So you kind of got to write things down as you go, and then that will give you more incentive to actually carry them out, and then you have a better chance at, you know, doing some shit, achieving some shit, accomplishing some stuff while you're, while you're still on this planet Earth. All right. It's been Showtime. Showtime Shredder Fitness over here. Size. Growth. Get big. Take care. God bless.